We're here at the Web 2.0 Summit in San Francisco. With me I have Joanne Bradford. She is the Chief Revenue Officer for Demand Media. Yes, I am. I'm also the Chief Marketing Officer. Okay, so revenue and marketing, do those yes. tie together at Demand? Yes, they do. Okay, uh, and what's the demand for marketing there, or vice versa? Um, well, you know, at uh, Demand Media, our goal is to really just create some great consumer brands and experiences, as well as um, build what we consider to be the studio for the new age. Um, the you know content creation studio hasn't been reinvented in a really long time. There's still antiquated, you know, ways of going about it, and so between those two things, we feel like we're building. Um, a really differentiated publishing business uh, with a technology platform. Now, when you say uh, consumer properties, what are some of the properties that people might recognize they run up to? And these are all yeah. digital, correct? Yes, yeah. yes. Um, so uh, our largest one is eHow, which is really um, to help people just get things done in life. Everything from unclogging your toilet to fi filing your taxes to figuring out how to put uh, your makeup on correctly. Turns out people are very concerned with um, all things hair, how to remove it, how to color it, how to make it go away, how to make it thicker, thinner, all those kinds of things. Um, so that is a category that we publish a lot of information in. Food, huge category. Um, they want simple information about how to cook things, um, you know, how to set the timer on their Blackberry, um, all the way to you know identifying. Um, when you should file for uh, mortgage bankruptcy. Um, so it's the largest collection of how to do things um, on the web. Um, our second largest site is uh, Livestrong, which is health and fitness. Um, and that site we launched about three years ago. And it is really about how to live a, how to live a better life um, on every front. And we just uh, pursed it into uh, Livestrong men and women because our data showed us that men actually care about their body parts mm. and women care about their whole experience. So uh, mm. women want to you know, live a healthy life, live a balanced life. Mm -hmm. Men want better abs and a good workout for you know, making themselves uh, have great biceps or those kinds of things. Or they're dealing with a very specific health issue like mm -hmm. diabetes or how to lose some weight. Um, so just a very different offering for both of those. Mm -hmm. We also then have um, uh, one of the top humor sites, Cracked, which is um, highly social. We have about uh, 1.8 million fans on that that okay. uh, drive about five referrals each fan um, a month, which is fantastic. Um, and that's a very different model that is uh, 2,500 writers cr uh, put in story ideas. We produce about seven to ten of them a week um, and put them out there. And, it's uh, used quite a bit on the mobile device. Um, it's a really, really fun site. Humor for men 18 to 34, so not quite my target. Um, and then we have a couple other sites uh, that we run. Um, Trails.com, if you ever need a trail map, we're there to help you. Um, golf Link, if you ever need a golf tee time. Um, and then we have uh, Type F, which is fashion and beauty, which we launched with Tyra Banks. And that's all about personalization. Um, and beauty because what we found is that one size doesn't fit all in beauty and a publisher like Allure magazine would only have 200 how-to articles when you really need 20,000 how-to articles to match to the different permutations of what beauty is. Just launched that about six months ago. It's uh, doing very well but it was built on Facebook personalization and the idea of having a large library of content that can help people figure out what they need from a beauty category. So, <coughs> demand media, I mean, the name itself is, uh, is evocative, and, and if you're sort of following the space and what's happening, in many cases you're providing information that people are looking for, as you say, yeah. how to information or uh, other things that y you know that there's a demand for. Yes. Uh, how are you using data around people's interests, their, their behaviors, to um, create more content? And then a follow up question. Uh, What's the, uh, what are the economics of content creation around that, and how are they changing? Yeah, um, so you know, there's a, there's a couple of different ways um, to think about content creation and the economics of it. It's not really appropriate to spend, you know, a half a million dollars on a webisode per episode. You know, that's what a primetime TV show costs for the smallest cable show is about $450,000. Um, we just don't think that there's the returns for that. 
um, in the web, and so you have to figure out how to do it at the right price. Um, and you better know uh, what people are looking for when you do that, or what people have a um, predisposition to share, or the category they're, that, that they're interested in. So one of the reasons that Cracked works is because we've got those fans, we've got those followers, and when we serve them the right content, they're very happy with it and they like it. So we make it at the right cost, it's very profitable for us. Same thing on eHow, same thing on Livestrong. We don't really, um, we're not in the hit making business, we are in the business of creating quality content for based on what people are looking for or based on what they're sharing. Okay. And uh, so, say maybe go to the, the last question here. Um, when I look at the sort of the, the future of um, online content, what are current consumption trends in the length of time people will, will watch, yep. what they're watching on, um, and how they're interacting with it? Tell us about where things are going. Uh, I mean, yeah. for instance, we're not going to have this interview last much longer than ten minutes because the assumption is people won't stick around. Yeah. And you know, after 10 minutes, they'll either understand the story or they won't, right? right. Um, so you have to keep being funnier or compelling. Well, you have to be. Um, I think you have to be an expert. I mean, one of the things that we're doing in the studio, and I'll be giving a talk about this in a few minutes, is the idea of expert. It's not enough to just give people information. You actually need to have some expertise in it. And what does that translate to? Mm -hmm. So John Batal is an expert in all things web, right? He has 145 thousand followers on Twitter, he gets about 300,000 visits to his blog on any given day. It didn't matter where he worked, uh, you know, he could be the CEO of Federated Media or work for, you know, a, a business publication and carry that following with him because he's an expert. And I think it's really um, the rise of the expert in content creation. It was, it's one thing to just create content out there and put it out there on the web. Um, there's another thing to be an expert. So there's sort of four layers that I think of you go through in the web creation. First is just information. The next one is inspiration. Are you inspiring people in some way by what you know and your expertise? The next one is influence. Does what you say matter? Mm -hmm. And then the next one is ultimately impact. It's very difficult for anybody to get through all of those. Um, but I hope that we're sort of done with the just like unbelievable amount of information mm -hmm. and we actually can move to inspiration and influence. Um, and I think that's what I saw this week with Twitter. Like Twitter's like, look, we don't want to take all the noise out of it. Mm -hmm. We want the noise and the celebration to be in there and the authenticity. But they need to be experts. They need to be fans. They need to be like if I tweeted that I loved the, you know, Tom Brady, people would be like, you don't know anything about football. You know, I want the person that is the great fan to be like why they like him. That is, you know, where I think information needs to, you know, keep going up the ladder. All right. So, well, fi finding uh, relevance and personal meaning in the exaflood of information. That's a good place to Yeah. End. Yeah, it's okay. great. Well, thanks so much. Thank that, you. Yep. Uh, so that was Joanne Bradford. She's the Chief Revenue Officer for Demand Media. And of course, you've heard all the different properties they have. Chances are you've probably landed on one within the past month.